This scholarship in Australia is worth over 28,000 Australian dollars. And there are other benefits like relocation allowance and child allowance. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are in, we're in Flinders University in Australia in search of fully funded masters and PhD opportunities. If you're a returning viewer, you probably know by now that in Australia, most of the scholarships are research-based. So if you're looking for a master's or a PhD scholarship, you have to come forward with a research proposal or a research idea or a research question, and then look for a supervisor in the department, in the university, who is ready to um, supervise your work. And it is with a supervisor that you often get funding. No supervisor, no funding. So I'll be showing you step-by-step -step guidance on how to apply for this scholarship. It's known as the Australian Government Research Training Program. So this scholarship is present in several other uni universities in Australia. So just type ROTP and Australian universities and you get different suggestions on this scholarship in different universities. So for this one at Flinders, let's begin. So this actually opened long ago in April and the deadline is actually very close by in August. So if you're interested in this, you have to start working as soon as possible. You have less than a month to put all your documents together. And as you can see here is a, a very generous sum of over 28,000 Australian dollars. So what does it entail? There are lots of info here that you can read on your own, but I would go straight away to the what I consider the most important bits. So it's either for a PhD or a master's. PhD is usually for three to four years. And uh, for a master's, usually um, two years. And for research master's or a PhD. So there's something they call taught master's and research master's. Taught master's are the master's where you go to class and take courses and then take exams. For research master's, you're coming with a research topic or research question. And you'll be assessed based on the research you, you did on that question. So most Australian, Australian scholarships are based on this research um, programs. You can read in details about this in this uh, this page. It's also well clearly um, spelled out. So the the amount here is clearly stated, and um, you also get a relocation fee of um, over a thousand four hundred Australian dollars as well. So if you're living outside Australia, congratulations. If you get the scholarship, you also qualify for this amount of money to assist your travel cost. So these are the eligibility criteria. Usually, this is for international students applying for a research master's or a PhD. And you have a background in that, in the course you intend to apply for, able to get a supervisor and meet the different requirements, including the English language requirements. So we could quickly check on this English language requirement and see uh, who qualifies for it and things like that. So for the English language requirements, you either take the IS or the TOEFL, but also if you've studied in English language in the tertiary level, that's your undergraduate was in English, you might not need to submit an English language test. So for instance, if you studied in Nigeria, we have the language of study as an English language or in Ghana or Uganda, you wouldn't need to submit an English language test, but just clarify with them. But that's, I think, what was stated here. So let's, let's move on. So how do you apply for this um, scholarship? There's another document here that contains a summary of the step-by-step the -step procedure and as well as the general information on what you need to know in applying for the scholarship like a summary of the web page um this initial web page so you see the interesting bits of info i think you should digest this very closely and to give you the nitty-gritty of the scholarship and as we've seen um, initially covers full tuition overseas and um healthcare for overseas students, living stipend, and um, allowances, other kinds of allowances as well. So it's a long document here. You can sit to read on your own. 
and you can see the different kinds of um, allowances you get, the relocation allowance, the child allowance, and um, things like that. So let's go back to the main page. Let's skim through the interesting bits. So to apply, you have to go to the um, application page of um, any of the eligible courses at the university. So to apply, you also need, as we said, a supervisor. You have to find a supervisor in one of the departments at this university. So without a supervisor, as I said initially, it is difficult to get funding. It is difficult to get scholarship. So there are links here on um, how to get to the application portal and things like that. But it's very important, as I said, to get a supervisor. So we'll be looking at that particularly, the supervisor bit before we check other instructions. So find the supervisor. So just go to the bottom of the page. So there are lots of other info here you might want to read, but just for the sake of this video, just go to the bottom of the page and type in your area of specialization. For instance, you could type in here climate change. And it will show you the list of professors in the university working on climate change. So you check their profile and see which one best aligns with your interest. It's advisable to just go with one. But if that one doesn't respond after a week or two, you might just um, try another person. It's often advised not to contact multiple professors at the same time because they kind of communicate um, with each other in the first place. So just type here, go straight to the professor and then contact the professor. There is already a video on my channel on how to contact professors. I think that video is just here. Just scroll down my channel, go to letter of motivation, statement of purpose, research proposal, and then how to contact professors. So when you contact the professor, introduce yourself, introduce your academic background, your work experience, and tell him or her of your intention um, to apply for either a master's or a PhD, and tell him that you wish or to ask for his or her supervision. Since your areas of um, interest align, usually you attach a copy of your CV and if possible, your research statement or your research proposal. There is also a video on this channel on how to write a research proposal. So check the video and just a one page or a two page research proposal. We should contain your research question, your methodology, your um, a very brief summary of the relevant literature as well. And that is one distinction between Australian scholarships and other scholarships. They want you to like come forward with your own research ideas. So far, there is somebody in the department who is ready to, um, to supervise you or is a specialist, a general specialist in that area. So that's it. To find a supervisor, just type in your area of interest. You can type in here conflicts, conflict peace building. And see, these are the professors in conflict and peace building research. Send them an email and we wish you good luck. So there are other things here as well. And this caught my attention, publication. So Flinders University actually requires publications. This might not be the general requirement in all Australian universities, but at least we see it here. And they will need at least one publication and a maximum of five. So a number of people might complain that they do not have a publication yet. But I say, why not submit like your undergrad um, dissertation, your undergrad thesis? That could be, that could qualify as a publication if you ask me as well. For those who are published already, good luck to you. Also submit those things in your, in your, your papers, in your application as well. So as we said, uh, academic transcript, of course, this is like a normal one requirements for most um, scholarships because they want to show or they want you to show that you've done bachelor's degree already and you passed your bachelor's exams and look at what we talked about a research proposal and here they want a very short one just 500 words outlining the problem the hypothesis of the question and the methodology and then 
reference letters. I think you should keep an eye on the deadline as well. I don't know if I've said this earlier, but the deadline is the first week of August, August 5th to, pre to be precise. So you have less than three weeks to do all this. Um, if you'll be watching this video on the 14th of July, when it would come out. So a CV and all other documents. So I hope this was useful, guys. A quick one, signaling you to this opportunity at Flinders University in Australia. Very generous. I think the most important task here is to try to get a supervisor on time and try to submit before the deadline, which is the um, the 5th of August 2022. Why applying, you might be told to contact an agent. So some Australian universities work with agents in different countries. And if that is your case, try to contact the agent. But if the agent tells you to pay, report back to the university. So I'll take that again. Some universities in Australia work with agents in different parts of the world. So if you are told to contact an agent, some people are told to contact agents. So if you're told to contact an agent, um, do not worry, try to contact the agent here. This is the piece of information here that some countries require you to apply through an agent. So if you're told to contact an agent, do not worry, contact the agent. But if the agent asks you to pay some amount of money, run back to the university and say, is this the policy? Am I meant to pay anything? Usually you're not meant to pay because the universities pay these agents in the first place. So here you just type in your country or the region you're based and see the agents working in your region. Remember, before you contact these agents, make sure you are directly told by the university to contact them. Because I think it is written here that apply first directly to the university and then you'll be told whether you need to contact an agent or not. Yeah, you will be notified if this is the case when you register to apply for a course. And I hope that is clear. So there are lots of info here you can read on your own. This video cannot last forever. So I just brought to you the important bits that I think would water your interest. And that's it, guys. As usual, we cannot wait to clap for you as well. We cannot wait to celebrate you. Get to work as soon as you can. Put your documents together. And we'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now.